Let's start with a question. Is the gut the gateway to disease? For as long as I could remember, I wanted to be a doctor. I went to medical school, I went to residency, I opened up my own practice, I started seeing patients, and I got frustrated. I realized that all I was doing was listening to symptoms and giving medication for those symptoms. Or, I was doing tests, and based on those test results giving medication, and sometimes people didn't feel better, they actually felt worse. And I realized there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way of doing it. So I started a research, and I, I continued to look for different ways that I could help my patients, and I came across the term functional medicine. And it interested me, so I ended up going to a workshop in this concept of functional medicine, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to share with you just two principles that I learned from that workshop. The first, disease, the first, you should always go to the root cause of disease. Go back to the basics. Look for the root cause. And the second was disease usually starts in the gut. Now, this may seem simple. This may seem intuitive. You may think, hey, why the heck didn't you know this? Well, I'll tell you the truth. That's not how we were taught. So I started using these principles with my patients, and they started to get better. So I figured I need to look deeper into this functional medicine thing, and I did. I ended up certifying in functional medicine, and the whole focus of the practice was changed towards the, the principles of functional medicine. So what is functional medicine? Whenever I say functional medicine, I want you guys to think root cause medicine. I say functional medicine, and your minds think root cause medicine. Another example of functional medicine is a tree. When you look at a tree, what do you see? You see the branches, you see the leaves. You don't see the roots underneath the tree, but the truth is, in order to have a healthy tree, you have to have healthy roots. And the same goes for the human body. If you want a healthy body, we have to go to the root, we have to get to the root cause, and that's what functional medicine is. I'd like to take you on a journey to three different doctor's offices at three different times for three different patients that have just been given three different diagnoses. Our first patient is Bill. Bill is a 48-year-old white male. He's been getting chest pain off and on. He sits in front of his doctor after this long workup who looks at him and explains to him, Bill, you have heart disease. And he puts him on four medication. Our second patient is Sally. Sally's a 60-year-old Hispanic female who's been getting tired, who's been gaining weight. And after her workup, her provider, her doctor explains to her, Sally, you have thyroid disease. And our third patient is Martha. Martha is a 31-year-old black female who every time she goes to bed, her legs feel antsy. She, this is causing her not sleep well. This is, this is affecting her mood. And her doctor explains to her, Martha, you have restless leg syndrome. Now, as the three of them are driving home, as the th they just finished their doctor's office, they just finished their appointment, their Bill is thinking to him, our first patient is thinking to himself, he's thinking, I have a problem with my heart. And as Sally is driving home, she's thinking to herself, I have a problem with my thyroid gland. And as Martha is, is driving home, she is thinking to herself, I have a disease in the nerves of my legs. And all of that is partially true. But what her doctors didn't tell her and what her providers probably didn't even know was that their problems were rooted in the gut. Show of hands, who here feels fatigue often? Who here feels pain often? Who here has either been diagnosed with a chronic disease or has a loved one diagnosed with a chronic disease? If you've raised your hand, there is a good chance that the problem is in the gut. Let's get back to our three patients. Our first patient, remember Bill, our 48-year-old white male that was diagnosed with heart disease? Let's see what happened to his gut. Well, years before his diagnosis of heart disease, Bill 
ended up getting some indigestion. So he went to the pharmacy, he got an antacid, and he started taking this antacid, which made him a little bit better, but then he got a little bit worse, and it didn't fully go away. So what did he do? He went to his doctor, and his doctor prescribed him a prescription acid blocker, a strong acid blocker, and it did the job. He started taking it, and he felt no more indigestion, no more heart, heartburn. And two years later, or I'm sorry, two months later, he realized that he still had the, the, or he was still on the medication. So he's thinking, I need to get off this medicine. So he tries to stop it. And he ends up with more pain than when he first started. So he, he ends up going back on the pill, and that would be okay if the pill was completely safe, right? It may cost him a little bit, but at the end of the day, what is, does, it, does it really matter if, if the pain is gone? The truth is, you need acid. So you don't want to indefinitely block acid. You need acid to kill any bacteria that are making their way into your tract and viruses. You need acid to activate, activate vitamins and to activate minerals. You need acid to help digest your food. There's a reason we have acid in our stomach. And that's not all. If you, don't, if you block acid the way he did, if you take the acid blocker and block it, what happens, there is a level in the blood called ADMA that goes up. And when that level goes up, your blood vessels are less pliable. They can't move as well. And that, coupled with poor dietary choices, can lead to packing and clogging of the blood vessels, which leads to the diagnosis of cardiovascular disease. And that's what happened to Bill. So what did we do with Bill? Well, using a functional medicine plan, we were able to put him on a stress management prescription, a sleep prescription, and an exercise prescription. Now, he was diagnosed with cardiovascular disease, but using the functional medicine approach and using functional medicine tools, it became apparent that his problem wasn't rooted in the heart. His problem was he was eating foods that were bothering him and causing indigestion, and he was blocking acid, which was causing more problems. So using that and with that information, we were able to put him on an elimination diet and figure out what foods were actually bothering him in the first place. We were able to get him off his, his heartburn medication, and we were able to, and we were able to put him on a heart-healthy diet, and now because he had the diagnosis, he was listening a little bit more, and he was more compliant, and he's now chest pain-free. Let's look at our second patient, Sally. Let's see what happened in her gut. Well, Sally ate lots of processed foods. It was a major part of her diet. Did you know that over 68% of American diet consists of processed foods? Did you know that? Well, she was one of those, she was, she was definitely following that statistic. And she also ate a lot of wheat products. And wheat, wheat products have a protein in, the, in, in, in wheat called gluten. And what happens is if you, end, if you eat lots of processed foods, and if you consume a lot of gluten, you can end up with something leaky gut. Now, Listen, I have a reputation, so don't go say, Dr. Elliman said, leaky gut. Because if you go say, you can talk to your family, but if you go start talking to your conventional doctor, they're going to think I'm a quack, they're going to think you're crazy, might as well just put aluminum foil on your head and just <laughs> and move on. What you have to say is, increased intestinal permeability, because that's a scientific term and that's where the research is at. Increased intestinal permeability, what is that? If you look, well, quit saying leaky gut. I just said don't say leaky gut. So if you, if you look at the intestinal wall, the intestinal wall, if you look at the cells, they're very tightly stuck together, like in this picture. And the reason is, is we don't want large particles to leak into the bloodstream. Because when they do, the body thinks it's under attack and it tries to attack those large particles. You're supposed to fully digest your food before it makes its way into your bloodstream. But what happens for various reasons, including two things that Martha had, which was she was eating processed foods and she was eating gluten, which can increase zonulin levels, which can cause increased intestinal permeability or top secret leaky gut. What happens is it opens up and now large particles leak into the bloodstream, including gluten, and then gluten's floating around and the body's like, what is this? What do I do with this? And then something else happens. It's called molecular mimicry. And molecular mimicry 
and I, for effect, I clicked it three times for it to go once because I just wanted to really focus on this point. What is molecular mimicry? Molecular mimicry, if you, I want you guys to imagine that you have a twin. The twin looks exactly like you. It's an identical twin. You guys wear the same hat. You guys look so cute because you guys go everywhere all the time looking exactly the same. And then your twin does what irritating siblings want, some once in a while do. Your twin goes and commits a crime. So, Unfortunately, this twin isn't really the brightest of the two of you, and the twin doesn't wear a mask, and they have video footage. I mean, it's a big mess. They have video footage of the crime. They have DNA evidence. I don't know what, if, what your twin was doing, pulling hair out or whatever, but they have the evidence sitting there, and the police go start looking after, this, look, looking after the perpetrator of the crime, right? They find you. You look the same. You have the same DNA, and guess what they do? They go after you, they put you in jail. Well, guess what? The thyroid gland can sometimes have a twin, and it's called gluten. Because there's a region on the thyroid gland that looks very similar to a region on gluten. So what happens is, is you, that gluten leaks in your bloodstream, your body makes antibodies to attack gluten, and then it turns around and it attacks the thyroid gland. So, as she eats more, as she eats more gluten, more gluten is leaking into the bloodstream. The body's making more antibodies. It's attacking the thyroid gland even more until it's destroyed to a point where it can't make enough thyroid hormone. And when it can't make enough thyroid hormone, you end up with a diagnosis of thyroid disease. And that is what happened to our beloved Sally. Now, what did we do? Put her on a personalized plan, which included stress management which included sleep hygiene prescriptions, and which included exercise prescriptions. Now, remember her diagnosis. She was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And that's what she thought, this is what I have, right? But the truth is, and using the principles of functional medicine, we were able to, to realize she had two things. Leaky gut, or increased intestinal permeability, and she had molecular mimicry. So what be, knowing that information, we were able to help with that leaky gut by giving her an amino acid called L-glutamine, stop with those processed foods, stop eating the gluten, and then now the gluten is out of the bloodstream, the body's not making antibodies anymore, and not turning around and attacking the thyroid gland, and we caught her at an early time, so thankfully, she no longer has thyroid disease, she's back at her ideal body weight, and she feels great. Our third patient... Martha. Martha was our 31-year-old black female that was diagnosed with restless leg syndrome. What happened with Martha? Martha was bottle-fed. I want you guys to realize, not too long ago, doctors were saying it's actually better to bottle-feed. They are actually, they were recommending bottle-feeding as over-breastfeeding. But it turns out, you know, once you start going away from nature, Things can happen, and we find out the hard way. Well, bottle, what happens when you bottle feed and you're not getting the protective effect of breast milk? Bre breast milk actually is going to have antibodies that can kill off bad bacteria. So what happens is, is that you can get an overwhelm of bad bacteria growing in your gut. And guess what? You need good bacteria. You need a balance of bacteria. Why? Well, because bacteria regulate your immune system, they help digest your food. There are multiple things that bacteria do. As a matter of fact, for every one human cell we have in our person, there are at least 10 bacterial cells. We're made up of more bacteria than people, than human, right? So she has been, she's bottle fed and she gets the perfect setup for SIBO. So her immune system goes low. And when his, her immune system is down, she starts getting infections as a child. So with those infections, what does her mom do? Take her to the doctor. Every time she takes her to the doctor, the doctor gives her an antibiotic. Every time she takes an antibiotic, it kills off all of the, the bad bacteria, but it also kills good bacteria. And eventually, that coupled with poor dietary choices, she ends up with something called SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, an overgrowth of all this extra bacteria in the small intestine, a lot of it bad bacteria. And guess what? Overgrowth of that bacteria, specific strains can actually create a toxin that leaks into the bloodstream, irritates the nerves, and gives you restless leg syndrome. And that's what happened to Martha. So, 
what did we do for her? We gave her a stress management prescription. <laughs> we gave her sleep hygiene prescription. We gave her an exercise prescription. And these are all customized to the person. You don't have somebody that is very logical and, and, and technical. I don't sit down and say, close your eyes, wusa. I'm going to go, I, you know, you got to... You, <laughs> You, you got to change it up a bit. I, so I don't want you to think we're doing the same thing for everybody. But remember what her diagnosis was. She was diagnosed with restless leg syndrome. But because of functional medicine, because we were able to use the tools of functional medicine, we knew that her real problem, the root cause, was small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So we put her on a spe specific diet called a low FODMAP diet. We put her on herbs to kill off some of that bad bacteria. We put her on a good probiotic. She is now restless leg syndrome free, and she's now off all of her medicines. I have just given you three examples of how three seemingly completely different diagnoses all rooted in the gut. If you look at their stories, the food they ate played a huge role in how they got ill, and the food they ate played a huge role in the healing process. We started this journey with a question. Is the gut the gateway to disease? And the answer is yes. Fortunately, it's also the gateway to healing and to health. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless your guts. <laughs> Thank you very much.